welcome. Thanks. Good, how are you? Good. I wanted to hop on um, to talk to you about everything you've gone through and um, you're so passionate about what you do that I could not be attracted to you. So, um, and you just got married recently from my understanding. Yeah. How was yeah. that? Awesome. It'll be um, almost a month and five days. Ooh, still happily married? Still happily married. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Made it this time. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so I know the reason I was kind of attracted to you in the first place is because I've been through and I've had surgeries for my ovarian cysts and everything. And I know you've shared that you have endometriosis and have gone through your health journey with that. Can you kind of take us back to where it all began, I guess? Yeah. Um, my journey with endo. Um, so I just got diagnosed with endometriosis almost four years ago. Okay. So at 26, did I finally get diagnosed with endo? But um, my whole life, I was just, I was always in pain. Mm -hmm. I was always sick. Nobody ever knew what was wrong with me. Um, I got my period really early. Mm -hmm. um, I was very young. I think I was like in fifth grade. So whatever age that is, I was in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, but it was not a pleasant surprise. And literally from that day on, it was just crap. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, in and out of countless doctors, um, I was misdiagnosed a bunch of times. I was diagnosed with like stomach things like IBS. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of, you know, people, it's, it's hard to diagnose. So I spent a lot of years kind of in that state of like frustration and then feeling like, you know, there's no hope mm -hmm. for a very long time. And you're that whole like, well, why is this happening to me? I didn't know anybody else that this was happening to. None of my friends were like this. And I was just a sick girl my whole life. I was just that girl with like tons of medications in her purse. Like you had a problem. I had something to fix it. I, you know, any, every doctor's, I mean, I was traveling to doctors in New York city to try to get some answers, countless tests and nothing. Just, you have IBS. Yeah. You know, so finally, at 26, I, I had my laparoscopy, and I was diagnosed with endo. Um, and then after that, I just kind of realized that I didn't want to be held down or, um, you know, felt like I was not in control or that I couldn't, this is lucky, yeah. live, um, sorry, live, you know, the life that I wanted. And mm -hmm. literally the day after my lap, I you know, woke up and I was like, I need to change. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how did they figure out through, cause, uh, cause you were misdiagnosed for years, which must've been so frustrating. Yeah. Um, the only way you can diagnose, um, endometriosis is through a laparoscopy, um, which is where they, they go through like right underneath your belly button and they have to actually go inside of you. So it's a surgery that has to happen just for diagnosis. Yeah, so what prompted them finally to do that? Um, I begged for it. Yeah. I heard the word endometriosis from my gynecologist when I was about 16, hmm. maybe 15, 16, and um, she was like, it sounds like you have this. I mean, she, would, she asked me like a bunch of questions and I was like, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me, yeah. Um, but long story short, she ended up getting pregnant herself, um, and she never came back from maternity leave. Okay. The doctor that took her place didn't fully believe me when I was like, this, there was this really big word she said. It started with end, and it ended, you know, with S-S. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. It was a really big yeah. word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big words, yeah. Um, yeah, but he was just like, oh, no, it can't be that. Mm -hmm. And then finally at 26, I was like, I'm done. Yeah. Like, just let me know what I have. I need to know. Yeah. So I, I went in for it finally then. Yeah. yeah. And then right away they knew that was it. Oh yeah. They yeah. said they can tell that, you know, so you, you wake up from the surgery and they can, mm -hmm. they, they'll tell you what, what went down. <laughs> so then, yeah, when you were asleep, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. So then what did the doctor say? Like, he's like, okay, oh, he or she said, okay, you have endometriosis. Yeah. yeah. It was like, it's, it's confirmed. Um, and then a few days later I went back um, just for like my checkup after the surgery kind of a thing. And um, they show you pictures of your insides, which is kind of scary to see. Wow. Yeah. Um, Many people. So, yeah, it's not, it looks like a battle went down in your insides. It's crazy. And then in that moment, um, you know, he was giving me a few options. Um, he told me that there's, um, you know, a chance I might not be able to get pregnant based on this. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot to hear when you're still bandaged up, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're like on tons of pain meds. You're just like, I can't, yeah, what's, happening? 
Right. You know, I mean, so your mind kind of goes down a scary place real quick. Mm -hmm. And then you're given an option of medication. And it's that though that's your only option. It's medication or another surgery. And you're just like, well, that can't, that can't be my only option. Mm -hmm. You know, but at that moment in, in his office, that was my only option. Wow. Yeah. That's like, it, it sounds like after the surgery, things progressed so quickly, right? And yes. So, um, I just, you know, I, I will realize that like, that was it. I was like, I just can't, this can't be it. Like I can't be a 26 year old in constant pain on going into basically menopause this is the medication that they were going to put me on to where they, they stop your body completely. And instantly you're, you're in menopause at 26. That's kind of scary. And I knew I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So I started doing my own research, um, and I ended up going to school for holistic health yeah, because yeah. I realized that I needed to just, everything in my whole world needed a change. Um, so I went to IIN, I found it, we went, you know, same school, yeah, and throughout that process, um, I realized that there were so many more options out there other than medication. So I told my doctor I wouldn't be going on the medication anymore, and I told him that I was going to be taking myself off of all medication. What did he say? He laughed at me. <laughs> and then he was like, all right, I'll see you in a few months. Wow. So he didn't believe, you know, and I was like, he was like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to change how I eat. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And he was like, I'll see you in a few months yeah. kind of thing. You know, he was like, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. um, so that day I stopped taking my, even birth control. I stopped taking birth control. I stopped taking all medications. Um, and I did not go through with the medication that he wanted me to go through. And I went full blown, um, dove right into the endo diet or the anti-inflammatory diet, whatever you want to call it. And, um, I was extremely strict with myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but with less than two months, my entire life changed. So what did, so that, yeah, there's, well, Okay, <laughs> so what did the diet look like for you? Um, so that meant no red meat, no dairy, no gluten, no wheat, no soy, nothing processed, no caffeine, no alcohol, um, basically nothing that was any kind of a stimulant, um, anything that could produce anything extra or flare anything up, anything that's kind of like a red flag, um, no sugar, I couldn't even have honey. Yeah, wow. Um, I mean, like to the T, everything. Yeah. Um, I changed my products that I was using. Mm -hmm. So I, um, you know, got rid of all my old deodorants. I got rid of all my old toothpaste, my, all my lotions. I changed everything to more essential oils and more natural. So I literally changed my entire environment. Yeah. Um, wow. Within, yeah. So, and right away too, I did it that day. Yeah. Was that hard then? Because what was your life before that? Oh, well, my life was a hot mess. I mean, yeah. I, oh, I'm a, I mean, I just, yeah, it was very hard because yeah. I, up until that day, my favorite meal was a cheeseburger with french fries and a Diet Coke. Okay. And then a brownie Sunday after. Huh? Like, you know, if you, that, that was like my meal. Mm -hmm. And instantly I couldn't have any of those things. Yeah. Um, so the first few days I was like, rah, rah, rah. And then reality hit and I was like, I'm going to die. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the thought of never eating pizza again. I mean, I, um, remember my first, cause I, I got this ha all happened during football season. So during the cold months and every football season, we would go to bars and just hang out and we would drink beer and we would eat like bar food. Yeah. And, and I walked into the bar and I could, and I couldn't have anything. Yeah. Wow. I sat there with just water. Yeah. Cause you can't, I couldn't drink. No. Nope. Couldn't eat anything on the bar menu. It was all fried. Yeah. So I literally just sat there with some water sure. and I ended up crying in the bathroom for like 20 minutes by myself. Like my now husband like came in and he was like, are you okay? Like he sent another girl in looking for me because I was just in there. I couldn't come out. Yeah. Oh. It was, it's hard. I mean, you're emotionally connected to food. Really, like it's a direct link to how you live your life and you don't even realize it until it's removed. And it's so hard because everyone around you was – engaging in that food and without a second thought and yes. here you are going through all like you had gone through years and years of pain and agony and not knowing and now you knew when you were trying something how did you stick like stick with it or when did you decide to do this how I don't know I'm I just 
I was, I personally reached the point in my life where I was so tired of being sick. Mm -hmm. I was over myself because all I kept hearing was just like this negative person and this like I was just annoyed with the amount of complaining that I was doing like I could just feel myself becoming this like horrible sad person and I didn't want that mm -hmm. and I got to that point where I was like I'm just done yeah like there's there's no other place like you just get to that line and you can even you cross it and I just was I didn't want to go back and I mean I slipped up a ton of times like I had some really bad binge moments like I wasn't a hundred percent I'm not a hundred percent like perfect but every day I, I just kept saying to myself you know like okay you have tomorrow mm -hmm. wow. you have, yeah and you, you can, always have tomorrow you could try again you know like you can you know put down that box of cheese it's like I fought myself so many times for you know but it was you know, you, it's just you, like it's in your mind. You have to decide like if you want a better life or not, or if that one bite in this very moment is worth it. Mm -hmm. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. You know, but do, it, yeah. Do you feel like crap for three days or do you want to just have a bite full of like a chip or something? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so hard. It's putting everything in perspective and sometimes how food makes you feel in the moment is not worth it down the road. And it's, and I did, to be honest, a very similar diet when I found out for my ovarian cysts and I was like, oh my God, that's, and she was even more strict and it was like in, in putting eggs or and stuff like that. Oh right? yeah, eggs too. Like, I mean, yeah. Eggs. So it was anything that could be an allergy because my gut health was horrible. Mm -hmm. And, but I agreed to the point, same thing. I was like, I have to do it like there's nothing else left for me. Right. So my doctors couldn't give me a solution. Right. Um, and I mean, I'm still in touch with them, full of credit to them, but it was just, I was, I had had enough like you. It was hard. That's how I felt too. I was like, I just, I'm done. Like I wanted, like, I remember at one point I wanted coffee so bad yeah. that my, like Tom was just like, you don't have a cup. Yeah. <laughs> now. Like I'm going to bear break up with you. And I was like, yeah. no. Yeah. You can't yeah. let me game. Yeah, yeah. It must have been such a roller coaster no. for me. Oh, he said that that first year was really rough. He was like, I did not like who you were. So when did you start dating him, actually? Um, I was with him two years prior to okay. that. Okay. So, he, so that's why our, our relationship is interesting, and sometimes it's hard, I guess. But he was with me before Endo mm -hmm. and after. Wow. Yeah, so he saw, so he's actually the person that realized that I was feeling better before I realized it. Hmm, okay. Um, one day we were just driving, and I was just talking, and he just, like, stopped me mid-conversation. He was like, you have not complained once about being in pain in a really long time. And that was less than two months in to yeah. changing, like, since I've changed my food. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, huh, I'm not in pain. Yeah. Like I didn't even realize that the process was happening because I was so focused on the, you know, other things mm -hmm. that I didn't realize I wasn't in pain every second. Yeah. And it's so funny because I guess you were so used to it. Right. I, I mean, the pain is, it out. yeah, the pain just becomes your life. The sickness, I'm sure you know, like you wake up in pain, you go to bed in pain, you, you're just always in pain. So yeah. you reach that point where it, it is, you push it out. Yeah. And so it was, was it two, two months or so that things started to yeah. 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 And then what happened? Um, I, I stayed completely like on point mm -hmm. for a year following the endo diet. Um, I mean, to the T I changed, um, my job too. I changed wow. careers. So I went, um, I was able to go full time holistic health coaching, mm -hmm. um, which really helped too, because I was in a really bad toxic environment mm -hmm. and, um, the stress that came along with my job was a direct reflection of my health on the inside and it was showing on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I knew I needed to get out of my old career. Um, so I found, you know, my passion and I made it into a lot more. So I was able to do that, which helped a lot. Um, and then I moved out of my parents' house, which helped a lot too, because mm -hmm. my parents don't understand one thing about food and how it's directed to your health. And they would have donuts and pizza and Chinese food all the time. And I mean, I can't even smell Chinese food without feeling like I'm going into a flare because of all this soy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so being surrounded by people that are unsupportive 
in an environment that's scary and that's a trigger mm -hmm. is can lead to you know never completing or never you know like moving on or sticking with something you know if you're always like if it's always in your face yeah you know so I think of all of those things like my environment changed my career changed relationships were changing I lost a few friends in the process because I I was changing so drastically mm -hmm. you know, like from this party girl to this like holistic like weirdo <laughs> like hippie girl I guess you know yeah and my friends just they didn't like the new person and but I gained other friends that you know that do get me yeah so, so a lot of things changed. Yeah. No, it's it was a transformational year or so, I'm sure, for you. Yes. It was very rough emotionally. It was definitely highs and a lot of lows. Yeah. Yeah. What was, was there like a particular moment that sticks out as a low or a high to you? Um, I think the nachos crying is a big thing. Yeah. I think in that moment, I realized how emotionally connected I was to my food. Mm -hmm. In what and, way? Um, I mean, anything that I would ever do revolved around food. Yes. If I was happy, I would go celebrate. If I was sad, I would want to go vent and, you know, devour something that was horrible and, like, drink away my problems. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, anything, good, bad, sad, you go to a party, like, my whole world was food. Yeah. And I had a really bad relationship with food. Yeah. I didn't, you know, know where my food was coming from. I didn't care to think about where my food was coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, my relationship with food. Yeah a big eye opener. Like I didn't realize, you know, how connected I was to it. So that was a big moment, you know, like an aha moment. Like I was at like my all time low. I mean, I was crying in a bathroom. Yeah. And when you should be happy and yes. enjoying things, right? Yeah. Like I was crying in a bathroom. No, I'm sure you're not the only woman who's cried in a bathroom. Right. Over nachos. I oh, well, maybe hopefully not nachos. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That must've been really hard, but yeah. uh, like, so I guess just being, what kept you through all of this? Like, what did you, like, so you met new people that surrounded yourself. Like, how did you find I think your way out? What helped me is the fact that I started sharing everything I was doing mm -hmm. on social media. And I had people coming to me and girls coming to me. Like, I'm, I had two, I was, I'm friends with two sister-in-laws, mm -hmm. their sister-in-laws, and they both have endo, but they never told each other. <laughs> <laughs> but they come to you. Yeah. And just like I didn't you know just by me sharing that I'm I have it and how I was changing my life for it mm -hmm. kept me accountable because you know I I realized I was like what well, if I knew if I know this secret yeah. that can help in just a tiny way like it's not obviously going to be a cure but like it can help you get out of bed which yeah. there are some women that's all that they want yep. and you know I had to keep sharing it so I knew if I wasn't doing it if I wasn't sharing it, then I couldn't help anybody else do the same thing. Yeah. But I think that was just the one thing that kept me always moving was just my endo sisters and the fact that, like, I knew if I could just help one more person, mm -hmm. you know, if I could help one more girl not go through what I did, mm -hmm. then my suffering from not eating a cheese it that night, yeah. was okay, you know? It's worth it to somebody. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was a big thing was just knowing that I have, like, you know, these new friends that were kind of relying on me. Yeah. Yeah. I find so many, like, and that's why I'm doing this. So many women have different struggles and especially related to reproductive health and all that. And I didn't tell anyone. So like, I was totally the opposite. And it was like, I had something like only my close friends and family knew and my boyfriend. And it was like bottled up inside of me. Mm -hmm. And it was, and, if, and now that I've started talking about it, I'm like, I could have been helping people all along and by sharing and letting you know that there's so much right. so many people go through it right it's a really scary thing to open up about I didn't um open up about endometriosis like publicly until like almost six months later ah okay so it took me a while I, I didn't tell very many people about it because yeah. I mean it's, people don't want to talk about your ovaries I don't know you know they don't want to have that conversation I do I do but no. some people don't some yeah people don't. <laughs> right. so weird it's not a normal subject. Like, hi, I'm Meredith, and I have, you know, my, yeah. my ovaries are a hot mess, and yeah, I'm totally yeah. yeah. an endo monster. Yeah, you know? it sounds like a perfect pickup line, too. Yeah. Like, nobody could take that seriously. Yeah. It's a scary thing to talk about, yeah. you know, so it definitely took me a long time, too. 
Yeah. And I guess you kind of, because at six months, you were probably in a better place. Yes. As well to start sharing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which exactly. must make it easier. Yeah. Because then at least I could have been like, well, I mean, I know that this works for me. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know? And everyone's different. So, yeah. but at least you, yeah, have been through what you've been through. And I'm sure, like, tons of women have been inspired and helped by you. So, it's crazy. What was Tom like when you had gone? Like, because I mean, it's obviously some lows when he wanted you to like force feed the coffee into you. Yeah. But yeah. like, you must, you changed so much in that time. How did he, like, because he didn't have anything with his body necessarily at that time, right? No. I mean, I think, I think before I got diagnosed with endo, he might have thought I was like the girl that cried wolf. Hmm. Okay. You know, like, all right, she's got a bad period. This is going to be my life. Don't talk to her. Like, or like, oh, she's always sick. Like, are you sure you're not, you don't want to just break up with me. You can just cancel plans. Cause you know, we're still new in a relationship. Yeah. Oh yeah. Before I knew what was wrong with me. Yeah. Um, so I would cancel plans cause I would be too sick or we would just lay on the couch cause I'd be too sick. Mm -hmm. you know? And to be in a new relationship and to not have any answers for yourself and to be like, look, like I'm going to doctors. I don't know what to, you know, and then, and then to finally get diagnosed with something it was kind of like a, she's not just making this all up in her head. Yeah. Like, this is a real condition. I got it. You know, so I think the realization that it wasn't all in my head mm -hmm. also switched his mind in the process. Um, but he was, he's also part of the reason why <laughs> I got into health and fitness in the first place. So he doesn't have any room to be mad at this new person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I first start, when I, when we first started dating, I wasn't into fitness. Like I didn't work out or anything. And because of him and his influence, it kind of led me down the fitness path and then the fitness matches up with the health. And then it just kind of spiraled from there for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so, I mean, but he's luckily he's very supportive. Um, and I am very open with him about what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I tell him not to touch me and I'm like, just so you know, when you come home, don't even look at me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to rip your head off, probably. There's, like, a um, radius that you right. need. So just give me, like, a little head nod, acknowledge that I'm here, and when I'm ready, I'll come to you. So I, I, um, I make it not my responsibility, but sort of in a way to make sure that I'm constantly communicating how I feel. Because okay. he, there's no way he will ever understand what we feel. No. Never. No. So I, and I, I never want to blame him or, or, you know, yell at him because he's closest to me. I don't want to take it out on him. So I'm always very conscious of making sure that I just communicate my, my true feelings yeah. at all times. Yeah. 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 But yeah I mean, it, it helps that he's very supportive, too. And I, I don't think that uh, the men in our lives get enough credit. I feel like they need their own support group. Just I know. Like, yeah. I mean, they, go, they go through a lot. You know, and it takes a, a real man to be able to, you know, be with a woman that's got, yeah, issues downtown. Yeah, and not just run away at the first. Right, yeah. right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing now with everything? Because that was four years ago that this is all went down. Yeah. Um, much better. I mean, I still have endo flare ups. I still am like kind of, you know, sometimes my body gets mad at me if I don't listen to it. But um, I've definitely. I'm still still completely medication free, so I haven't touched a pill. I know it sounds so funny, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't touched a pill. Um, no medication free is completely free still. Um, but I've learned to um, listen to my body, mm -hmm. which I think is key because every endo monster is so different. Like, mm -hmm. if if it works for me, it might not work for the next girl. You just never know. Like every body is so different. Like each insides likes other things that the other ones doesn't, you know? So it's a lot of um, trial and error and it's a lot of patience mm -hmm. that you need in order to like stay, you know, here. But I'm knock on wood. Like, I mean, I had a, I'm sort of in pain at the moment and I had a bad endo flare yesterday, but like nothing compared to where I've I was. I mean, some days I couldn't even get out of bed. And now I'm, you know, on my worst day, I'm still doing crazy exercises. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So a total, yeah, like a total complete, like I don't even 
know who this person became. Yeah, yeah. It's like so much. So much, yeah. And I remember, like, I would always be like, you know, judging the people that worked out all the time. Like, those people are just full of shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'd be like, sad. Like, that does not feel good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just screaming. (laughs) You know, and now I'm like that person. That's just like, but I mean, it's a different sort of high, and you you feel so good from the inside out, you know, and then to feel good inside and then to see it showing on the outside. I mean, even like everything, like my hair grows much better now. My skin is glowing. Like I'm just happy inside out. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I was not before. <laughs> yeah. What do you wish you had known before all of this? Oh, everything. <laughs> well, yes. I, yeah. No, but no, I mean, sometimes I think about it and then I'm like, oh man, if that doctor didn't get pregnant when I was 16, yeah. you know, sure. But then at the same time, if she, you know, if that little thing didn't happen and if I didn't go to another doctor and if my whole life, you know, so I can't really wish that I learned anything differently. But um, I think for me, I would have liked to have been given um, more resources, I guess. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Like, right. I just wish that it was more um, easy to find that there are alternatives other than surgery and medication. Yes. Easier yes. to find instead of like having to go to a holistic health coaching school to meet people, to learn about it, the heart, you know, the long way. Yeah. You know, I just wish it was kind of like, okay, you can do this or yeah, there is something that, you know, is less invasive under your future. Yeah. And, you know, doesn't, you know, come with any side effects. <laughs> yes. Do some people yeah. think you're crazy when you talk oh, to them? I think everybody thinks I'm crazy. No. I think it's, it helps though with gluten-free becoming more of like a fad. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a fad for us, but um, it's just more accessible. Like you can go to a pizzeria with your friends and order a pizza. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's becoming a little bit more easier. When I first started changing how I ate, I mean, there were hardly any brands out there for me to eat. And now there's tons. Like we could even have ice cream every day if you wanted. Yeah, it's true. Which is amazing. Which, great. You could go to like shop right and get it, you know, for like four dollars. You don't like I used to have to travel two and a half hours to get me some ice cream. Wow. I was desperate at times. I drove my ass. Yeah. Two and a half hours. For one ice cream cone. Yeah, worth it. Worth it. It's still worth it. But now you can go anywhere. So I think it's it's easier. I just, you know, Mm -hmm. I think it just, you know, having the right tools and the right, you know, be like, I just need a checklist. Be like, I can't do this. Got it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that. So I think some things like that are, you know, I would have wished that I had. Yeah. What do you tell women if they're just starting, they figured out they had endometriosis? Like, what do you tell them if they were just... Um, my first things are to get rid of soy, wheat, gluten, and red meat and dairy out of their life, which is not an easy thing to hear. Um, but I definitely say, you know, food first, um, and then fitness cause kind of goes all together. Even if it's something like going for a walk every day, mm-hmm. just, you know, paying attention to your body. Um, and I think the most helpful thing that I tell my girls to do right away is, um, I tell them to go get a journal. Mm, okay. And I tell them to start documenting everything um, from the second that they wake up until the second they go to bed. Mm-hmm. Everything with like how they're feeling, their stress levels, what's going on at work, how their insides are feeling, what they ate, what they did, um, the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. So then that way, you know, we can really help figure out the problems and where things are and how to adjust. But knowing your body um, is the key. Yeah. What if someone's like, I can't cut out gluten or dairy? Um, do I mean, you or you? I, do some I, people say that? Oh, yeah. I think everybody does. I tell them to at least give me three weeks. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll give me three weeks and let's see what happens. Yeah. 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 You, you can live three weeks out of your life without it, you know, and then, um, you know, after three weeks, go back. Yeah. You know, and after three weeks, if those people said I could never do it, what did it do? Do they go back? Do they? Um, they, for the most part, some people have a few slip ups here and there, but most, for, for the most part, everyone just sticks gluten free. Yeah. 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 Because you just, you physically are, feel so much better. Yeah. And it's true. And until you feel that, you don't realize you don't how you felt before. And you don't believe it, right? And you're yeah. like, no, I feel fine. But then you don't realize that fine is 
crap. <laughs> yeah, and then once you get to that point, you just you, it's hard to look back. Yeah, you know. So it, usually in three weeks, might like, just give me three, and yeah. you'll be you know game changed. Yeah. So for your wedding, did you have like a gluten free, dairy free? How did you do it? Oh, I did. Well, yeah. I had yeah. So my my friend that lives up in Canada, um, she actually came down and made me my own um, approved cake. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so she customized, yeah, um, Amanda, she made me my own wedding cake that was Meredith approved and a few cookies and cupcakes. It's so easy to just ask a caterer or the restaurant, you know, to what are the other options, you know, and that's all that I did. I just asked our caterer, I was like, can you make this gluten free and dairy free and soy free? Like, can you make this? And he, I mean, they either say yes or no. And our caterer did. Yeah. So, awesome. I mean, he even got us gluten-free cornbread, <laughs> oh, so which is amazing, you know? And, I mean, so, like, tiny little things really do make a huge difference. You just got to ask for it. But, yeah, I mean, there was almost everything was Meredith approved. Yeah. At, yeah. And did people know that when they attended? Oh, everybody was like, oh, my God, this tastes so good. Yeah. And nobody felt like crap after, you yeah. know? You didn't go into, like, a food coma. I mean, I've been to some weddings where I was like, I can't dance. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like, there's too much. I'm like full up to here. Yeah, it's true. You know, but yeah, so everybody, you know, so that's a good thing. You didn't feel like crap at my wedding. Yeah, yeah. And it shows people that you can have like a delicious wedding meal. Right. You can easily incorporate this into your own life. Right. right? Like it's totally doable if you just want it to. Yeah. Be. Yeah. yeah. What are you most grateful for in your life right now? <gasps> oh, lucky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How long have you had him? Um, since May. So lucky for me, yeah. He's um, like a all last year. Um, I basically, you know, manifested what I have at this present moment, and it included being in a really pretty office at my house, which I'm sitting in. Um, it included a really pretty big white desk that I'm on, and it included a puppy being married to Tom, and um, it's it's that and lucky is a fam like he makes us a family and for somebody that might not ever be able to get pregnant like I'm not there yet so I'm not thinking about it but you know he's like my little baby so you know he just kind of makes everything feel like whole I guess mm -hmm. he just you know finishes out everything that I you know envisioned my life to be I guess yeah well you look very happy with him that's for sure thank you mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> what's next are you manifesting because you said you dreamt this up a year ago that you were in this moment are you envisioning yourself two five years from now or anything or yes um so did you um see like some of my wedding stuff how it was happening so I got married at in a barn in New York and um basically it's so crazy I've always wanted to be able to like sort of invite like every endo sister to my house and do like some sort of a like girls weekend let me teach you and take you food shopping and I'll cook with you and I'll teach you and I'll show you kind of a thing and um she's looking to have wellness and yoga retreats at the barn wow and that is what I I you know instead of it being you know a few girls in my apartment I want to be able to you know host these huge mm -hmm. events basically where it's just you know, holistic living with whatever your thing is. It doesn't have to be just endo, but mm -hmm. that is sort of my, my goal is to be yeah. able to have like a retreat, I guess, for endo. Yeah, that's, I totally believe that is going to happen one day. Yeah. Uh, when you envision something, do you do a vision board? Do you write things down in a journal? Oh, you do oh yeah, yeah. Um, I journal every morning. Mm -hmm. um, so the second I wake up, I journal whatever's going on through my mind, and then instantly I rewrite my goals so it's just kind of like it sets my day up for success. I have vision boards everywhere. Um, I strategically place certain things all over my house too yeah. to kind of like trigger me and put that back into like where I'm going, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I have notifications on my phone that pop up mm -hmm. with reminders and mantras that I've set for myself, um, my background and my you know screen and stuff like that. Um, so all of those things I need to visualize and I need to see what I'm working for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, sometimes it just gets, you know, brushed to the side with daily life crap. Yeah, it's so And then true. you forget why you even started this in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, visualization, um, huge. I have it all over. 
Yeah. 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 I've yeah. started doing it. So it's like, I, that's why I love these ideas. Oh, I've yeah. on my mirror in the bathroom. Oh yeah. I'm like stuff and putting it above my bed. And oh, that's a good one. So like, so that's what I see here. Yeah. Before I go to bed, when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I even set my morning, my 5 a.m. morning alarms to like positive mantras. Yeah, that's awesome. like my first one is like, you deserve. What do I have? I have something about how I know 5 a.m. sucks, but you yeah. deserve the life that you dream. So yeah. get up. <laughs> yeah, that's an awesome. Did you, did yeah. you like come up with that or? No, that's what my alarm says. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So like, you, that. yeah. So when you wake up, you know, it's like, yeah, it sucks, but think of what you want. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, you know, it's huge to visualize and to, because mm -hmm. whatever you put into your mind, you're going to get back. Yeah. I totally agree with that. It's so powerful, the mind. It's so powerful. Right? I mean, if you, like, I, I say I can't all the time, but I'm just like usually joking around. Like, mm -hmm. I say that about Lucky all the time. Like, he's too cute. Yeah. I can't even. But like, yeah. if you really do apply the I can't, in that negative way where you really think you can't do something, you're just never going to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you start doing all these things? Like I know through IAN you do a lot, but do you read books? Do you listen to podcasts? Anything? Yeah. I'm, I do um, personal development every day. Mm -hmm. so I like just dove in um, because when you change, like especially in the beginning, when you're changing something like food, I mean, you need, you need your mind to be on point too with it because if your mindset is a good and if you don't have any positive reinforcement constantly being like shoved at you, it's really easy to kind of lose focus. So I read, I, I have a huge bookshelf filled with books. Um, I'm always listening to PD. So instead of listening to the radio, I'll try to listen to, you know, podcasts and audio books mm -hmm. to kind of really just in, you know, surround myself with all of it and, I swear anything by Louise L. Hay is just like a godsend. So I own like everything that she's ever done. Yeah. I was going to ask for one favorite one that you have. Oh, yeah. yeah. Home girl is like my, my life. And then, um, the book, um, you know, all of her books just really just make sense, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. That's amazing. Her words and I can't even explain it the way she explains it, but she just gets it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a direct link. I mean, even she has this one book too, where at the very back, I can't think of the name. I'm sure you know it. Is it all is well or something? And at the very back, it's almost like a dictionary. Okay. And she's got everything listed out, like whatever problem you have from like migraines. And she even has endometriosis in there. And she gives you sort of like a mantra, a focus, something to like say yourself into why this is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you have digestion issues, it's like because you're holding on to something and you're not ready to release it. So it goes right to your gut, you know? So in the book, it breaks it down by like things like that. And you're just like, I can't poop because I can't let this go. Yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> Life all moment. Is cool. yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm constipated. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So Luis L. Hay definitely sort of opened my mind up to, um, allowing myself to listen to my body, mm -hmm. you know, and to like kind of go within and be like, okay, so I'm getting these pains. Why? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what is it telling me? What's my body trying to get my attention for? Because mm -hmm. I find so many women try and ignore and block out mm -hmm. and control their body in such a way that it, it, I mean, it might work for a short term, but at the end of the day, your body rebels. And that's what my body did. And yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, you have to listen to your body. Like, I mean, when you get so sick to the point where you can't pick your head up off of your pillow, like, hi, that's a red flag. Yeah. Like, you, your body is telling you to stop. Yeah. Something's going on. It's yeah. going to force you to stop. Like, sometimes when I go too hard, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm psycho. So I sometimes go too hard to the point where my endo monster is like, nope. And it shuts me down. Because I wasn't listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big cue. Yes. In a way, I mean, it sucks. And it sucks, like, but it's, yeah, because you wish you could keep going, but. Right. But sometimes, you know, resting is the hardest and the most, the one thing that you can do the best for yourself. Absolutely. When are you happiest nowadays? <gasps> In the mornings. In the mornings? You're a morning person? I'm yeah. definitely a morning person, yeah. I love um, the quietness between the 5 a.m. and the 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Lucky usually doesn't get out of bed because he's bougie like that until like seven seven thirty. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, um, so I creep out of the bed at five and it's just silence and I can watch the sunrise mm -hmm. and I do all of my personal development, all of my goal setting, all of my writing at that time. And it's just me. Sometimes I have music on or a podcast, but it's just the oneness, you know, the calm before the storm. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? So what does a typical day look like for you now? Um, so I usually wake up at five. Um, I'll grab a lot of, I'm, I grab water right away, kind of a thing. And then I do um, my journaling. So the first thing I always do is my, my morning pages, my journals. Um, and then I write my goals and then I'll do personal development. Um, so I'll either read like a mantra, like I always have miracles now um, by Gabrielle Bernstein on hand. Um, I have power thought cards by Luis L. Hay. So I'll do something or something by Eckhart Tolle. Um, and then I'll kind of just do some sun salutations, <laughs> try to just wake my body up. Mm -hmm. And then usually by that time, after I'm done making coffee, Lucky runs out and we go for a walk. So I'm usually outside in the air, you know. And then my day just kind of starts with a workout. Mm -hmm. And then I shower and, and then I sit here and I chat. Yeah, yeah. You're so it's, I mean, so many women were probably hearing this and being like, man, I wish I could do that, mm -hmm. right? I know. I wish I could have done this too. Yeah. When yeah. I first started, this was like my goal. Yeah. It takes time, but you can get there. It definitely does. Yeah. Four years it took yeah. for me. Yeah. Wow. So just imagine another four years from now. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's like my old jobs too, never really understood what it was like to have something like that. I mean, I got in trouble at my job for going to the bathroom too much. That's ridiculous. And for being away from my desk from too, for too long. I'm like, I can't control my bladder. Like, I literally, I just, I can't. Like, I just go to the bathroom a lot. And the fact that they're microman, like, is, right. are they, should they really be concerned about that? Right. And so, you know, like, I mean, when you remove all of that and you can just do whatever, you know, you make your own schedule. Like, when I, yesterday I was not feeling good, I laid on the couch and I worked. Yeah. And I took a nap. Yeah. Yeah. I could never, you know, I was never able to do that before. Yeah. Well, name, do you have one woman who's inspired you? Oh. Not big one, but one woman. Oh. <laughs> I mean, as far as just like life? Yeah, or anything, or for whatever reason, or anything. Oh, wow, that was a hard one. I know. Um, I mean... I really do love Louise L. Hay mm -hmm. a lot. I think like her story kind of is just, she's done a one, a 360 like I have with her own life and her own journey. Um, and I aspire to be like an L a Louise L. Hay mm -hmm. for, you know, like the positive, you know, hot mess, women's autoimmune health issues world, I guess. Yeah. Um, she's probably was a huge game changer. I mean, I was reading her stuff when I was like 11, 12, not even realizing who she was. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So we, um, my parents just sold their house and we were cleaning out my old bookshelves and I found all of her books that I repurchased. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I have no idea. I, I was very drawn to her when I was younger. I didn't realize the connection. I didn't know what I was reading or yeah. looking at or anything. It didn't really make sense, but yeah, so maybe, and she's like in her late eighties too. So go ahead, girlfriend. She's yeah. Like, Kudos yeah. to her, man. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with her. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm gonna kind of ask like a series of questions um, that I ask all Earth Girl interviewers. Okay. Um, what is your definition of perfectly imperfect? Perfectly perfect. Perfectly imperfect. Oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like this right here. Yes. Hot mess. That is your right. right. Hot mess. I'm still in my PJs down below. Yeah. No one knows. It's all I good. No, it's, it's fine. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Okay. What's your definition of powerfully passionate? Oh. Can I say this again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think passionately, I think it's somebody that just cares so much that they're willing to make themselves extremely uncomfortable and do whatever it is to reach your goal mm -hmm. or to, you know, whatever, whatever that end is, you know, just somebody that's just willing to do the things that most people aren't willing to do. Yeah. Yeah. To get uncomfortable with that idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally agree that that is you. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. What do you want women to take away from your story? Um, that you don't always have to go down another surgery path or um, be put on crazy medications. But, you know, you, there are always, you know, maybe a, another way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally, I've been, yeah, I totally agree. That resonates with me. Why do you feel like you're not, we're not alone or you're not alone going through all of this? Um, because I know I have a lot of endo sisters out there. Mm -hmm. And um, a few of them have become my absolute best friends. Mm -hmm. And one of them was even my bridesmaid. Oh, yay. So um, it's, yeah, just, you know, friends. Yeah, yeah. the connections that you form. Yes, yeah. I mean, you, don't, you don't even need to say anything when you meet an endo sister. It's just kind of like a natural, like, bond. Yeah. They understand. They get, get it. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm with my people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do have people. You're not alone. And you're not alone. Yeah. I'm a crazy person. Right. But. I'm not. I'm not the only one. Yeah. 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 Um, and last, the last questions formally uh, is what 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 is one piece of advice that you would give to Earth girls um, going through struggles? I think allowing yourself to open up to whatever your intuition is. Mm -hmm. And just trusting yourself a little bit more than I think most of us ever do. Because mm -hmm. I think we're always our own worst critics. We're always the hardest on our, ourselves. And I think, you know, being open and willing to try new things and, you know, just trusting your gut. Like, if you have that gut feeling like I did, just do it. Mm -hmm. You know. I think just being open to allowing something better to happen to you is key, you know, mm -hmm. open the possibilities. Like you just never know. You never know. You just got to try. You have to start. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks, right? That's three That's weeks. Three weeks. I mean, it goes by so fast. It does. It does. I mean, it goes by so fast. Once you get in the groove of things and then you, you don't, then maybe two months later goes by and you're like, huh, I'm not in that much pain anymore. Yeah. Yeah, shocking. It actually works. I know. Right. The crazy world we live in. No. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Good figure. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Meredith, for everything you're doing. I mean, in terms of sharing your story and being so open about your what you've gone through. I mean, I know you have end of sisters, but you inspire so many women because of what you've been through and how passionate you are. It's crazy. And how like how full of life you are now and full of zest and you like just open and you do glow and you radiate love and compassion and caring. And it's just amazing that because of what you've gone through, the fact that probably without it, you wouldn't be where you are now and the, the world needs you where you are right now. And so, yeah, I want to thank you for that and acknowledge you for that. No, you didn't cry. No, I know. I, <laughs> we said no crap. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. No. Um, so yeah, is there any last parting piece of advice before I hit the on your record button? Um, no. I mean, my only thing is I share everything that I do on Snapchat. Yes. So I wanted to say, what's the best way for Earth Girls to get in touch with you? Um, so I share everything that I do. Like if, so one thing that's always bothered me is whenever I was looking at other like, you know, fitness people or um, health people, they don't really always share what they eat all day long. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I share everything that I do, <laughs> everything that I eat. Um, I mean, I share everything. So if you're ever, you know, if that's a good way to kind of view everything that I do, I guess, um, and how I get through my life. And then um, I do have on my website, and, you know, a start, you know, an endo guidebook. No, oh, that's great. So many ebook series and it's for free. You just have to, you know, go on my website and it's just Meredith Gersted yeah. um, or Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. I'm all the same. Yeah. So it is Meredith Gersted, which is your old. Yeah. My maiden name. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to change it on my public stuff. Ah, yes. No. Cause that's just too confusing. So yeah, it's just we're like, who's this person? I know. They're like, who's Meredith the pie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfollow. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, so I'll get all those links off you so I can include that because I do obviously want women to get in touch with you. Um, yeah, because you're, I mean, for those that have gone through endometriosis, you're unbelievably powerful and the fact that you offer the free guides and everything is, it's life-changing, right? So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to actually like below and subscribe for more. And let us know what you thought on Instagram. These stories are here to empower you to unearth yourself so you live powerfully passionate. So you embrace your imperfections and find purpose in your story. You are not alone. And together we can turn our struggles into our strengths. Until next time.
two weeks. The world needs women who have come alive. Unearth yourself. The sky is the limit, Earth girls. 